Hi and welcome to another episode and what we've got here is is the Commodore 128 which my lovely wife got me for my birthday but to go along with that my online friends surprised me with a Lumafix 128 and a the future was 8-bit SD to IEC plus which is very nice of them to get for me I'm really thankful for that because it's going to be some wonderful extras for this Ooh, Commodore 128, which I've never actually used apart from the video that I talk about there. I I haven't actually had one to play around with when I was growing up or anything like that, so I'm rather new to this system. But let's get this Lumafix 128 installed first, and then we'll play around with this SD to IEC plus uh, some other time. Sorry, it's a lot of uh, numbers and letters to remember. So let's get on with this, installing this Lumafix 128 and see what that does. I know it um, basically gets rid of the, what are they called, gel bars in your picture. I used to have one on my Commodore 64, which I was playing around with a few years ago before I got an Ultimate 64. So, as I say, let's get this open. Okay, I've uh, opened them all up. I'd like to point out that the two screws at the back are longer than the three at the front and the one in the middle is the longest of all so remember that when you put them all back in again let's flip it over and see how easy it is to get inside oh what's that horrible noise what was that horrible noise let's see oh there we go and I'm assuming there's a ribbon cable or something that I've got to be very, very careful of. I can feel it. It's the bottom left here. Just in there. And then there's a long one. Just at the side here. pops up so yes the LED was plugged in over here so watch out for that one and then there's the keyboard one and there's an earth still one here so we need to undo the screw as well and then we can move the keyboard out of the way it doesn't have to come all the way up just yet because it's just a shoehorn one but yeah looks nice and neat in there a little bit of rust but um, yeah seems okay let's put the keyboard out the way all right how do we get stuff so there's a screw here screw there one there another one there one there one there and yeah so just follow it round and undo all the screws so that's all the screws taken out how easy does this lift up very easy by the looks of it and there we go and whoa what's been going on here um anybody know what that is oh that's interesting let's put the RF shield down as well now I know this one's had some memory chips replaced and it's had the capacitors replaced. There seems to be different things in, they just seem to be yellow, I can't uh, differentiate what's supposed to be on there and as we know when it boots up it has got that fancy ROM built-in which you can see from uh, looking at the video from last time. But this I need to get this installed. So let's have a look of where the Lumafix sits. There's some instructions by the looks of it. And then the fancy thing itself. So let's have a look at the instructions. So, 
it does explain an awful lot of things. Let's say use a piece of plastic or paper between pedometers and the chip so you don't short anything if you slip on the screwdriver. Turn the pots clockwise solely up to 12 rotations. And it's saying place a piece of insulation tape over the components next to the socket to prevent shorting. And then the fix is easy to install. Note the orientation and carefully lever the Vic video chip from both ends a little a little at a time to prevent damage to the legs. Now firmly insert the Lumafix 128 into the empty socket. When ready put the Vic into the socket of the Lumafix 128. So let's get on with it then. And I'm assuming it's hiding in there. And a few more other things about how to actually tweak it. But today I'm only going to put it in today. I'm not actually going to play around with it in this episode because I have other things to be doing. Okay, let's prise this off. It's there we go. It's come off relatively easy. Obviously it's cooling both of the chips. While I've been looking up some more info, that's the VIC chip, and it's not just for um, being in C64 mode, it's for being in the C128 mode as well, which is great. So, first things first, we need to get that chip out of there. I don't know how we're supposed to do that. Okay, so that was scary getting that VIC chip out. I've used that at one end. And I've used my spludger at the other end and prized it out that way and it jumped out. Um, I'm not going to show you doing it again. It has done it. I'm not proud of the way that it's come out. It has bent a couple of pins, but I don't want to keep touching it unnecessarily. So first things first, let's get this in there. So I'm going to actually pick this chip up again and put it over here, away from everything. Actually, even better. Put it on the RF shield. Let's take this out from here now. Russell, Russell, Russell. Now I'm going to read the instructions again to make sure I get things right. But let's get on with it. Okay, I've gone about this a little bit the wrong way. It's not until afterwards that I remembered that actually they gave another socket to act as a riser. So that needs to go in, and then we put this in, but because I messed around already, the chip's in already, and of course I've made sure that the notch of the the socket, which we're going to use as a riser, is at the same end as the original, so that we don't get confused when putting this one in. So I'll use that again, and use the spludger. Let's put a bit of force down, and that should be it now. It should be in. Oh, that's a little bit of a mess up. Completely forgot, I need heat sinks. So I'm gonna to have to come back to this. A little longer than a few minutes later. Well, I made a bit of a mistake a month ago and completely forgot that I needed heat sinks. So I've waited and uh, it took a month for them to arrive, but they've arrived. So I need to install the other gadget down here now and then put all the heat sinks on and then pin all this back down again. So I know it's a bit of a jump cut this, but uh, <laughs> the way things are. So let's put the other bit in. Take pop up this time. But I put some captain tape down and pulled the chip out. Let's try to do this. as possible there we go that's in take the chip but note on this one that the notch is at the top not on the bottom it's at the top make sure the legs line up which might be a little bit off right now because 
I got a little bit bent coming up. So I'll take it away. Uh, trying to line them up. solid fit so that's both of these fancy updates put in let's put all the heat sinks on now okay so we've got all the heat sinks on we've got the extra memory on with the heat sinks that was easy enough that was a lot easier to pull the chip out than this one was um for this one though i've had to take away the riser you know the chip socket that we we're using for as a riser i've had to take that out because otherwise i couldn't close the lid by having all these heat sinks on here it's just too high but now it just about makes it but i'm not going to turn this on in this episode i'm going to give you at the edge of your seats so sit there wait until next week and have a look does it turn on and if it does turn on have i actually managed to use the lumafix to get rid of the jail bars hopefully i haven't tested it yet so have a look in the description down below check out all the information that's there click on the discord come join the discord comment in the comments like the likes click the subscriptions and the notification bell but as always happy gaming